very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. Robert Osoro is still with us and of course joining me is a superb duo players, uh, former players who prominently featured for the national team Arambe Stars before and in 2004 they represented the country during African Cup of Nations that took place in Tunisia. Though the national team Arambe Stars was eliminated at the group stage but they did spectacularly well representing the nation and it's been 15 years down the line since the country qualified to the continental shop. This time round it's happening in Egypt and Kenya will be among the 24 countries participating. Joining me James Omondi, former Tasca striker and the former uh, Arambe Stars striker as well alongside Titus Mlama. Gentlemen, good to join us. Jemo, how have you been, man? It's a pleasure coming back to, to the show. What's good? Uh, life is good. Life is good. Yeah. Tito, how have you been? I've been okay. And people are mistaking you with Simon Sepe Mlama. He's a twin brother to <laughs> Sepe. <laughs> so, this is Titus Mlama. He featured in 2004 while Sepe didn't. Of course, he was an, away in states for some academic scholarship. Tito, how have you been? How are things outside there? Everything's okay. Mm. Just working with the young boys. Uh, still in the game. Giving back to the society, of course, of course. Also, Robert is also still with us, but he is saying that, you know, the draw is tricky for the national team around the stars. Pool C, Kenya, Senegal, Algeria, Tanzania. What do you think about the draw? Manageable or tricky one? It is manageable. It depends with the preparations and uh, the psyche of the players. If it is right, uh, they can perform. Tito. You played against Senegal at the group stage in 2004 and th this time round uh, Kenya has been pulled alongside Teranga Lions of Senegal. I know during those days the likes of El Haji Diof, he was uh, in Cairo last night during uh, you know, the draw and what do you make of the squad right now and the squad then? Well, I think Senegal has been a good country uh, football wise and I think they've been having a, a very strong team. Uh, uh, especially during these qualifiers but then of course uh, you cannot compare to that to that time but of course i've been following their qualification uh, matches and they are they're really having a good team and uh, they had a good run in the qualifications i think they uh, almost had a perfect record in the qualifiers yeah actually it's true they never lost any match they won five they yeah. won five drew and one drew one yeah, yeah. yeah. Senegal is the best ranked African country uh, and uh, we've been pulled alongside them. Algeria, you know Kenyans on social media platforms immediately after the draw, they are saying that you know Kenya has to collect three points from our neighbors Tanzania, then force a draw against Algeria, then probably if we get beaten by Senegal well and good as long as we make it to the <laughs> next stage, that's round of 16. I don't know from your assessment, <laughs> what do you make of Kenyan chances to For, fortunately, progress? Fortunately or unfortunately, football is not uh, mathematical. mathematical. Uh, the key is the preparations. Uh, there's no doubt, Senegal have a very good team, they have very good players. Uh, Sadio Mane does it every week. We, we, and our best player uh, is struggling for form. So, so it will depend on the preparations that we have. So hopefully we prepare well um, and then uh, face the challenge. Tell us, yeah. is it just me or could I be wrong to say that it is a Rambe stars that needs to work hard because from the qualifiers themselves, Senegal were on top of their group, Algeria were on top of their group. So it, people can say manageable, but Kenya has to really work hard. Yeah, we really have to work hard. And um, uh, my, my take is that if we have uh, not only working hard, but if we have a good squad selection, then mm. we will definitely make a mark yeah. because. You know, these teams, like uh, a team like Senegal, have many, mo many of their players playing abroad. And yes. you know, on African arena, these mm -hmm. players have been struggling over the years. Mm -hmm. You see the likes of Drogba, he could not uh, make it really, really, really shine in the African arena. So yes. uh, I think that, uh, yes, we have to work hard, but mm -hmm. we have, uh, depending on the uh, squad selection, I, I think we can give anyone problems at any, any, uh, uh, at any time. Sebastian Mini, of course, the dilemma now is the selection that Titus Mulama is talking about. What is he supposed to do in terms of getting his choices right to make a 23 man squad that will be superb enough to represent the country and sparkle at the continental stage? Considering that what he's just said is very important as well. The likes of Dede Drogba, in as much as they did well overseas with Chelsea Football Club, coming back on African soil, they didn't replicate the same show. Do you think now that we have plenty of players uh, playing in our local? 
local leagues that would be key the key is on the players that are playing you see like uh, uh, for example like Jesse Were. yes mm. very good striker plays superbly every week for Zesco. Zesco. Yeah. when he comes to the national team there's a problem he doesn't give or he doesn't replicate the same form as the one he has in, uh, for his club so the coach has to look at his pool of players that he has been using all this time for the qualifiers then look at the players who play week in week out like where they should not uh, forget about him. For what he's been doing for his club, playing constantly in the Cup, the Cup Champions League, uh, Confederations Cup, scoring left, right and centre, they need to give him another chance. So that uh, we go with a team that is uh, acceptable across board. Okay? And that is key. The selection that is going to be done, then they go for that training camp, get the team spirit right, get the right uh, uh, mentality in that team, they can beat anybody. Titus, I, I've got a question. In 2004, when you went to Tunisia, you had seven players from Madara United. You were actually considered the engine of the team. Today, we don't have many players from one club in Kenya Premier League who can make it. But from Jemo's conversation, you can realize that we've got good players in Kenya playing in the African continent to actually understand African football. We've got Jesse Were, we've got David Kalab, we've got Anthony Akumu, we've got Dennis who is at Inkana. If these players are given that chance as African players who understand African football, can we have a very good engine for the showpiece? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, <coughs> it's a big advantage uh, mm -hmm. um, to give this, uh, these lads a chance mm -hmm. and I think it's a uh, a very huge motivation also to them because mm -hmm. they know that this is the stage where they can even further their careers, mm -hmm. maybe get a contract uh, in Europe. But they do understand the African terrain well and uh, yes. uh, I think in terms of motivation it's only important that these guys are given a chance. Mm -hmm. Osoro well, Robert, mm -hmm. how, how to see Tanzanians? Because in their last clash, it was a do or die fixture against Uganda cranes. They needed to win so that to qualify to the African Cup of Nations, and they did that beating Uganda cranes 3 0. Should Kenya approach each game cautiously? Because there is this attitude from Kenyans, especially on social media platforms, who think that you know Tanzanians might be a walk in the park, and like you know, other group challengers. How, how, how tricky are they? They, they have got a good squad, but I think for Tanzania, they struggled in the qualifiers. And that match against Uganda, even if people say that it was a correct score and everything, <laughs> I think for me, in my own understanding and everything, I'll still say that match was thrown away. That's an, indi an individual uh, that, position. That is my own individual <laughs> position. I think that match was thrown away. Tanzania finished at position two at their group level. Mm -hmm. They won only two matches. Uh, that, uh, and they had a group that had Lesotho and Cape Verde. You realize that with Uganda. So if they were competitive enough, they could have been top of their group or second in their group with a formidable type of number. I would actually go ahead and say Tanzania is among the lucky teams that made it to the showpiece, courtesy of the showpiece being expanded. Not because the showpiece was competitive enough of the 16 teams and we won the cream de la cream. I think Tanzania were the lucky ones to get into the showpiece because the showpiece now is 2014. How about Kenya? And we needed to be there. Did they qualify on merit? Kenya and qualified. Did they deserve yeah. being at the continental showpiece? I think they deserve because they, they defeated Ghana at home. They defeated Ethiopia at home and gave them problems away. So you cannot take away that from Kenya. And Ghana was a big team, and they deserve to go and fight for themselves and get there. For Tanzania, I think it was just Uganda Crane saying, let's also have East Africa, let's have the Sakafa region getting into the showpiece, but not good enough. And I think if my director can do me a favor, just uh, put the entire draw on the screen so that we can go 
pull by pull as we look into what happened last night in Cairo, the African Cup of Nations draw conducted. 2014 is taking part in Continental Shop is slated for Egypt later this year in June. Of course, Group A has got the hosts, Egypt, automatic uh, inclusion, and that's the draw on the screen. Egypt alongside uh, DR Congo, Uganda Cranes, and Zimbabwe. Arithmetically, does Uganda stand a chance to progress to the next stage, considering that the first two automatically qualify to the next stage, then third placed four of them to make it uh, at the round of 16? Yeah, uh, comparing uh, Uganda with, uh, with Kenya, the way they've been playing for the last like three years, Yes, Uganda, they, they have a fighting chance in that group. Yeah, because Ugandans, like uh, Tito just said, they have a lot of players spread across Africa. They have the African uh, uh, terrain. They know how to go about it. Um, so uh, they have a fighting chance. They can get a result against Zimbabwe. They can get a, a result against Congo. And even Egypt, they can get a result. Tito, do you, do, you, do you read from the same script with Jemo that Uganda cranes our neighbor really can get a, a point against DR Congo and Egypt? Yeah, over the years, I think for the past four, five, six years, Uganda have been playing very yeah. tough opponents and uh, uh, producing good results. So I think in this group, maybe Egypt should give them problems, maybe. But Uganda is a very strong team. I cannot see them having any problems with DR Congo or Zimbabwe. Remember, DR Congo is not the same. Uh, as of five years ago, they have, they, they have a, like a generational change. And uh, Zimbabwe, I do not give them any chance against Uganda. So uh, yes, I, I think Uganda stand a big chance. I think it's one of the toughest groups because you look at Zimbabwe, they also finished the top of their group in the qualifier. So you cannot take that away from them. And then Zimbabwe and Congo were in the same group in the qualifiers. So that one might say who is going to be better against the other one. Then come Uganda. Uganda, I think... The moment they qualified the last time, the last time round, after 39 years not qualified, I think they finished the finals in 79, Uganda was in the final team in 79, then yeah. they lost. Then now, they come back, they don't get into the showpiece, but they fight to get there. From then on, they have been amassing a great pool of players, not actually outside of Uganda, but in Africa, you realize they have got like people in Kaiser Chiefs like yeah. Walusimbi, they have got Dennis Onyango mm -hmm. with Mamelodi, the likes of Batambuze mm -hmm. back here in Kenya. And when you go and play against you can more so in Nambole or at their home, it's not a team to joke around with. Yeah, Let's go to, to the group B, which has got Senegal, uh, group B, sorry, which has got the Super Eagles of Nigeria alongside Algeria, uh, alongside Guinea, uh, Madagascar, and Burundi. Manageable group and a walk in the park for the Super Eagles of Nigeria guaranteed to qualify as well, Robert, to the next stage? I, I think Nigeria, they, they have a big chance to qualify into that group, considering Madagascar is a debut team coming on to this side. Burundi, they have not been tough enough in, in the African continent. And also, they are making, I think, the second time they are making into the showpiece. But Guinea and Nigeria are teams that you can give a chance to go there. And then Nigeria have got this problem of not being in the last AFCON, not winning the last uh, an AFCON showpiece for I think 10-15 years because the Super Eagles that people know, the dream team of Super Eagles of 94-96, the moment it died out, we have not seen any other Super Eagles, no matter how good the players are. Uh, tell us about the Super Eagles you met in the 90s and the 70s, the likes of Amokache. You played them here in Nairobi. And the Super Eagles of today, it's different. It is. It is. How tough How tough were Super Eagles during the, those days? Because last night I, when the draws getting conducted, I saw you know players getting interviewed, Ahmed Musa, you know, <laughs> laughing, looking very happy because he thinks that you know the group is, is, is yeah. well manageable, it's easier for them. How tough were the Super Eagles of those days and the Super Eagles of nowadays? Well, you can, you can tell from uh, <laughs> Musa's reaction because that uh, he, he's not been in the game for long. And that that is, he's only thinking, he doesn't think beyond the group because uh, any, any serious player would not be happy about uh, just qualifying or getting a weak a mm -hmm. group yes. to qualify to the um, quarterfinals. But I think the Super Eagles then had, had great players and most of them were leaders. 
and you can see you can tell from uh, after after their career after their playing career they've, mm -hmm. they've gone into coaches or, or, or management so uh, yes the, the the super eagles then was very tough very organized very talented and very committed players mm -hmm. as compared to this uh, super eagles that we, we just saw like like playing the in the world cup the the players really really uh, struggling are not are not that uh, competitive uh, yes. if i can say Jemo, the super eagles that played kenya sometime back i think towards uh, early 2000s 1998 what are the standout names that you know caused sleepless nights to kenya there was obafemi martins uh there was the likes of uh uh nani nwanko jj okocha the dribbler yeah but you you have to understand every country every footballing country uh, there's a time the the, the uh, that generation has to go yeah. Then mm -hmm. between that generation and raising another team, yeah. yes. there's always a, there, there's always that a period yeah. that you suffer. Yes. So Nigeria have suffered. Yeah. So they are rebuilding. Now they are back in the Cup of Nations. Yes. So uh, it is wrong for players like Musa mm -hmm. to start smiling and laughing yeah. that they are in a good pool. Because for I'll tell you for free, this Burundi team mm -hmm. It can spring a surprise. Yes. Watch them. They play very well. They play very well. They have very good technical players. So they should not write off anybody in that pool. And their president has been quite supportive of their football activities. Good motivation enough to actually they finish the second better group. Yeah. Uh -huh. Of course, we're done with Group C that has got Kenya alongside Niger, Algeria, Senegal, and Tanzania. And so we go straight to Group D that has got uh, Morocco alongside Ivory Coast, South Africa, and Namibia. What a pool, oh, sorry, Robert. Well, that's a pool <laughs> that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm of the idea. I've been following Hav Renard, the former Zambian coach and Ivory Coast coach. Mm -hmm. He's the one coach who understands the Africa Cup of Nations. You saw what it went to Zambia gave them a trophy went to ivory coast gave them a trophy went to morocco took them to the world yeah. cup so it tells you that this is a coach who understands african football and with the resources that morocco has this is the team to watch True. for the all of the shoppers not just qualifying to the knockout stages but it is a team to watch for ivory coast i think it's the same scenario as the way james has said it your star players are gone the Yaya Touris are the done, drug bars are done. Solomon Kalu. Yeah, and those players actually won after Hav Renard has come there, and it was, I think, a fighting time True. for them. No matter what, we have to get this trophy. But now again, it's a new pool of players, and you need to show that you are there for merit and to win the trophy. So it's a tough pull, but those are the two sides that can make it to the knockout stages. Tito, South Africans are also struggling despite boasting of, you know, well-equipped facilities. They hosted the coveted Showpiece World Cup in 2010, and I think uh, that they, I think, first host country getting eliminated from the group stage. They have not been doing well as far as football is concerned, both African and even at the international stage. Are they also suffering from the problem of transitioning? Because in the days of Benny McCarthy, Quinton Fortune, nothing much has been witnessed in terms of growth and development of South African football as a country. Do, do you give them an edge over the opponents in Group D? I, I cannot, but South Africa, I, so the South Africa that I can remember is uh, the, the likes of uh, Mark Fish, Mark Fish the, the yes. Bays, yeah. you know. Yeah. And they, they were really a good team. You could see from their display, from their organization. But this South African, uh, this South African team has been like a cold warm. You know, they can sometimes when you expect them to win, they lose a match. So they, they are they are a team that can spring a surprise any time. But you cannot bank on them. What I can say about them is that um, uh, we we should expect anything from South Africa. <laughs> yes, we can expect uh, maybe to, to lose against Morocco, then they spring a surprise and win. You should expect them to win against Madagascar then South That's Africa, true. then uh, goes to slumber and they get beaten. So <laughs> I cannot give them such an idea. From the qualifiers, we realized that South Africa actually never lost any match 
tells you that they are good defensively going into such kind of a tournament. They were in the same pool with Nigeria. So they can, they can say they have measured themselves against Nigeria and they can go out there and fight. But the problem with South Africa most of the time is you've got a good leg in Africa and the sports immigration getting into Afri in South Africa and good players are getting into South Africa. Mm -hmm. But South Africans themselves don't take football very seriously the way they do rugby and uh, cricket and other sports events. If they were to concentrate their resources on football and everything, they can win it. Because at the end of the day, it's 96, they won this showcase, the first and the last they have done it so far. From then on, they have not even made it to the quarterfinals. They have not even made it, brought a serious team into the competition that can, can actually fight for the competition. So, it is tricky for them in this pool also. Namibians, of course, they qualified arithmetically. I remember after their last clash, you know, players uh, slept on the pitch thinking that they have, had been bundled out of, you know, the qualification only to realize later, a few minutes later than the other game that uh, played in the same pool had ended in their favor. Now they qualified mathematically. What do you make of their chances to sparkle in that particular group? I think... Uh for me, they'll make the number. And their former top goalkeeper uh, was also last night uh, at Cairo. Canalelo. Yes. Yeah, he was a very good keeper then. I think they'll make the numbers in that pool. Uh, as you rightly put it, uh, Osoro, I believe Morocco is the team to beat in that pool. Uh, South Africa, uh, they, 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 they blow hot or cold. So you, you can never say... Uh, Quite unpredictable. Yeah, and Cote d'Ivoire, they are on the rebuilding process. Uh, it's good they're back in the Cup of Nations. So hopefully uh, there'll be interesting matchups between Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa and Namibia uh, to fight for the second slot. Straight to the next pool, that is Group E, Tunisia, Mali, uh, alongside Mauritania and Angola. Osoro? Yeah. Tunisia, uh, I've got an upper advantage in that particular pool to make it to the next stage. Yeah, considering that Tunisia won their group, actually they won their group winning five matches and losing only one, tells you that they are ready for the African showpiece. The only team that is getting baptism by fire there has got to be Mauritania. It is the first time they are getting into the Africa Cup of Nations, so they actually do not know what they are going to expect. But between Mali and Angola, those are teams that you cannot right off right. they are actually good good teams that play in the african cup of nations and for them they have been a mainstay in the africa cup of nations so it is one tricky pool which you are not sure of who is going to win because Mali were on top of their group in the qualifiers tunisia were also top of the group in the qualifiers so it's a group that is going to give people sleepless nights tito Talking about Mali, they had a formidable striker in the name of Frederick Canute who featured for Sevilla in Spanish football for quite long. Do you think they have managed to replace uh, such kind of you know, players so that they have proper transition getting into this particular showpiece? Well, Mali, I think they have, they have a good team at the moment, but now they, they, it's like the Mali playing now is, does not depend on the big names, but uh -huh, uh, they yes. depend on, not, not on individuals, but in teamwork. And that is what has helped them through the, through the uh, qualifiers. I know they have like uh, players like Keita, yeah. but then they, they really depend on, uh, on teamwork because not, not, not the, uh, it's not the whole team that uh, has big names. So I can say they have been able to replace him uh, as a team but not indivi uh, uh, from individual players. But from that, from that group, I think uh, teams like uh, Mauritania, they're, they're teams that they're are making debut into the tournament. Yeah, but and they're not under any uh, pressure. pressure. And they're, yes. they're teams that can cause problems playing yes. without any pressure, just yes. playing because they, they know it's a festival. Uh, uh, qualifying already is enough for us. So just playing and making, um, uh, uh, honoring the fixture, is in, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor in itself for them. Those are the teams that might spring surprises in, uh, in this tournament. Yeah. You see the Malis, the Senegals, the uh, Nigerians, they went back to youth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just have a look. Yeah. Just uh, look back. They went back to youth football. They've been consistently at the top yes. in, in African youth football. Mm -hmm. And these are the graduates 
that are moving to the senior team now. Yes. They might not be known. They might not be big names. Yes. But this could be a game changer for them. Mm -hmm. And like Toti has just said, Mauritania is an unknown quality. Yes. They are coming there with, with no pressure. They are coming to play football. So uh, uh, it could be interesting. It Very could, interesting. Yeah. It could be interesting. We go straight to the last uh, pool that is uh, Group F that has got all West African countries. Cameroon, the Intomitable Lions, alongside Black Stars of Ghana, four time African champions. Benin is also in that particular pool, alongside Guinea Bissau. Cracker, especially bet uh, between that clash uh, involving Cameroon and Ghana. It is a tough, tough group because now the pressure is also on Cameroon. You are the defending champions. You have to win your group and everything. And they have coming with one of the best players the world had to offer. Clarence Seedorf is the coach. And being assisted by Patrick Kluvert. Kluvert. So he has come in with a very experienced technical bench. The pressure of defending the trophy is on you so you have to come back and show people that you are really good enough into this tournament ghana is also there you have got the best players in the world but you're not winning anything mm. yeah you come into africa cup of nations almost everybody is from european based clubs playing football in europe but when you come back home there's nothing that you're going to do so it is going to be tricky for them don't forget Guinea-Bissau because Guinea-Bissau was top of their group in qualifying. Yeah. So this is a tough, tough team. That is, by virtue of name, we are not big enough. Mm -hmm. But the caliber of the players we have, we have the strength to take on anybody. So it's actually a tough pull. And Cameroon and Ghana, they have to be 100% sure that they can beat the other two teams. Tito, how tough were Cameroonians uh, during those days when Kenya used to play against them? Well, I think uh, <laughs> the, the Cameroon uh, have always been tough. Have been very physical then, but now we can see technical uh, technical Cameroon for the last maybe five for five, for five years. But Cameroon is, um, uh, I can say, sometimes they are unlucky in this competition because they have good players, they have good scorers, but then just uh, when you expect them to maybe make it to the quarters or the, the, the same is they're just beaten by a slim margin, unfortunate maybe in penalties. So I think Cameroon. Uh, now they are still strong, but not compared. Uh, you cannot compare it to the yester years. As far as Ghana is concerned, Samoa Gian is not uh, guaranteed to be included in the national team for the Black Stars. The coach spoke last night and he says that every player has got uh, equal opportunity. I don't know from where you see. Do you think he deserves a place or is uh, an all guard right now? I think the coach, uh, the back stops with the coach. So if he is made a decision, uh, maybe he, he's a human being. He might change his decision later. But mm. you look at the the coach when he was re reappointed. He tried to bring some of the core players mm -hmm. that uh, brought Ghana to that level. Uh, then the performances started stabilizing. Now they've qualified. Uh, he has had problem with some players, though. Are you brothers? Yeah. He has had problems with them, so he's trying to replace them, but albeit after qualification. And you look at uh, Cameroon, uh, from long time, between Cameroon and Kenya, uh, they never beat us. We always draw with them, uh, despite them having those, those good, good, good players. But currently they have uh, very technical players, not physical like before, technically they are good, they have uh, uh, good, good, good tactics when they play. And um, I think the surprise in this pool could be Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau, review of 2019 African Cup of Nations has been the segment on the touchline on Y25. For this particular afternoon happening every Saturday, 1 to 3, Max Olasiki is my name, of course, alongside Robert Osoro. Joining me is Titus Mulama, former international. He played prominently for the national team before and featured. And you were guaranteed of all matches at the group stage in 2004 under Ghost Mule, right? Playing on the wing. How was it, man? The best player in the world. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, don't, don't, don't take it away from him. He scored the first goal we, op we, we scored in open play, yeah. Cup of Nations, yes. when we lost against uh, Mali. Senegal, Mali, Mali. 3 1. So but he, you, 
you, you were a tight group back then. If we can remember, you had uh, Manuel uh, Ake, Ake. The, 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 the dreadlock guy, Francis Onyeso. I think I can get this uh, quote. You, you, miss the, you miss the group? Yeah, we do. We, we, we were a, a, a tight unit. We, uh -huh. yeah, we had James, we had a, uh -huh. like a chemistry built yeah. because we, we had worked for so long together. Yeah. And we, we had the same vision. Mm -hmm. we, we knew what we wanted in the long run. So. Yes, we miss those days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. And and uh, how was the squad in terms of transitioning? Even technically, Jacob goes to Malay. He's been at the, uh, at the helm of Kenyan football, uh, in charge of you know uh, an academy that has produced uh, engineer Michael Olunga. Comparing with the current squad and the current technical bench, how do you see things faring? I can say that um, having qualified. Uh, so you, we, we can just say uh, things are going okay. They're in the right direction. Looking at the team uh, or in the, at the squad, yes. you can see young players coming up or coming through the ranks. So I think it's a bright future for us, and this can only serve as a morale booster for the for the young generation in Kenya. And Maxwell, yes. is it unfair to compare that team? To the current team, <laughs> how unfair? It, it is unfair. <laughs> Ghost had his time. He had uh, that cream of players, that group of players, having worked with them for, he understood the players he had. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to appreciate now, we have another team in place, they have qualified, they have another technical bench in place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they also have to show what yes. they are made of, yes. isn't it? They go out there, uh, our team, we scored from op open play, mm -hmm. We won our first match yes. as, a country, as a country in the Cup of Nations. Yes. So they need to better against that. Burkina Faso. They yes. need to better that, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. They need to better that. So mm -hmm. they need to work. They need to do whatever they have to do mm -hmm. to get a good team yeah. that uh, will cut across board. There will be no acrimony. Or, or mm -hmm. yeah, I know it is very difficult to please a lot of people. Yes, but you just be fair. Get a good team. It is our country. Mm -hmm. We want our country to go to the Cup of Nations and better what mm -hmm. we did in 2004. Yes, definitely looking forward to that. And James Omond, of course, also speaking, former Tasca striker, now in charge of Ligindogo Academy. You guys are passionate about youth football. How is the progress at Ligindogo, Jemo? Uh, currently, we are not fairly very badly. Uh, the kids are growing. We uh, we, we just took a two categories, to Spain, uh, in Valencia, to another tournament. So uh, we are on the up, and I believe this is the right way to go. Uh, we need to get these young men playing, technically very good players. The tactics and these other things, they'll be uh, given when they grow older. Before, bef just before I wind up, someone is telling me that ask James Omondi, how was it competitive up front, you know, with that squad of Jacob Ghost Mule that had Michael Koko, the father to, my you man. know, Divoko Rigi, Emmanuel Ake, Dennis Oliet. How my, competitive? My man, you have somebody like Tito. <laughs> eh? When you make a run, he just gives you the ball. What else do you have to do? So it's so it's it's just uh, yeah. it's you has to lose. Yeah, it's if you don't score, blame yourself. You have Tito, you have uh, John Moore, mm -hmm. you have Mambo, you have Gaza mm -hmm. in that middle, my man. Then at the back you have Musa uh, Otieno yes, Tero. Yeah, you have Jojo. You have uh, Jojo is uh, jo Jojo Aweru. Jojo Aweru. Yeah. So why, then you have Isa Kasim. Why why can't you score, my man? Then in goal. Francis Onyiso. There was Francis, there Otto is Duncan, there is, there was so much. Cream de la cream. My man. So you have somebody like Tito, you have to score. Looking forward to that, of course, the African Cup of Nations slated for later this year in Egypt. Kenya, amongst the 24 countries that will be participating, and of course, have been pulled in groups here alongside the best ranked African country, Senegal, alongside Algeria, North African representative, and our neighbors, Tanzania. And both Titus Mulama and James Omondi, former international, say that you know Kenya, that pool is manageable and they can progress to the next stage. Always a pleasure having you on board, Jamo. Thank you for pleasure, your time. All pleasure, the best. Pleasure. Looking forward to hear from you soon. Tito, thanks for coming through, man. How is your academy? 
they are doing good at the moment we are in nakuru playing uh, some tournament uh, kuza kipaji uh, uh, yeah kuza kipaji tournament yeah. they are with the, the youth uh, our, another youth coach over there but we are doing good you mean youth football is now the core it it, it is all over the the, can, the world not the country only all over the world youth, youth is the is the core cheers man Coming up next, fans on where we focus on international football, a lot of headlines, review of UEFA Champions League and Europa League matches that happened in midweek. Man United fans uh, trying to be happy after being beaten by Barcelona, saying that they tried so much. Of course, that will form the basis of our discussion and also the games coming up next. Tomorrow, Liverpool against Chelsea. Don't go away. Stay tuned. It's the touchline on Y254.